Hello, and welcome back to another competitive programming video. Today, I will be talking about the basics of competitive programming and going more into depth about solving problems in the baseline logistics. To start, solving problems invokes two steps. The first step is designing an algorithm to solve the problem. The algorithm needed to solve a given problem is usually what determines its difficulty. Problems that require more complex or difficult algorithms are generally considered harder than problems which require less complex algorithms. The second step is the implementation of the algorithm into code. This step is equally hard, but is less determined by problem difficulty than algorithm design. Today, we will be talking about some basic implementation tips. Because C++ is the most popular language right now, I will be doing most of the explaining in C++. However, many similarities can be drawn between the different languages. Many things that apply to C++ also apply to languages such as Java, Python, and so on. Even the things that don't apply directly to all the languages have their appropriate counterparts that function in a similar way. To start, let's begin by looking at a basic C++ template. On the first line, the code has an include statement, include bits stdc++.h. This statement imports many headers into your file and will save a lot of hassle when it comes to importing certain libraries, data structures, and so on. Although some may argue that importing the individual libraries is quicker, that difference is insignificant in the context of writing your solution. If your solution is fast enough by a big margin, you will never notice a difference. Next, the code says using namespace std. This line says what it does. It says that the code is now using the namespace std in its code. What this essentially does is it eliminates the need to write std colon colon before every std library object, such as vector, array, map, cn, cout, and so forth. Before the main method, you have a big space for creating global variables and methods for your code. These can be used anywhere within the scope of the file as long as the usage comes after the declaration. Finally, your actual code goes in the loop. The code you put in the main is run when the program is run. Many IDEs have a built-in option to compile language files, however. If yours doesn't include one, make sure to find a way to compile and test your code locally via the command line or via a third-party compiler. I usually run my code straight from the IDE. Now, we will move on to actual coding aspects. We will start with input and output. In most code programming contests, standard input-output streams are used to read input and write output. There are a few ways you can go about this in C++. CN and Cout, or ScanF and PrintF. The advantage to CN and Cout is that they automatically detect the type of the object read or outputted. You don't need to specify the type. Meanwhile, on ScanF and PrintF, you must specify the type being read or being outputted. The one bad thing about CN and Cout, however, is that they are a bit slower than ScanF and PrintF in the long run. However, these are minuscule differences that don't make too much of a difference. Input would look something like this. When you read input, the code separates objects when there is a space or a new line. For example, if the input is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you read 7 numbers, the 7 numbers will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Output, output is as simple. Outputting an integer automatically determines the type and will output the appropriate value. You don't have to specify the type of the variable or value being outputted in, C, in CN, just like Cout. Sometimes you want to get a whole line from the input. It can be done with the getLine function. If the amount of input is unknown, say an unknown number of integers, you can use a while loop to input until there is no input left. Some contests also require that you use the input to read from a file and output to write to a file. This can be added to the beginning of the code as follows. Set the file names to the desired names according to the problem. Then you can read and output to the files. This also works on a local computer where you can have a specified input file and a specified output file and it will input and output to those files. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and be sure to expect more competitive programming videos in the future. Bye!